You're listening to Happy Hour Hustle, a bi-weekly podcast featuring the musings and witty remarks of the one and only Kim Bodie. We can promise at least two terrible jokes out of Kim and at least 10 minutes of incredible thought leadership from some amazing and influential guests. So grab a glass of iced red wine and join us for a wild ride. Here's Kim. Hi, everyone. Uh, Welcome to another edition of Happy Hour Hustle. Um, We are talking my favorite topic today, which is small business. Um, We have Carrie Quiella. You should spell that real quick so people know how difficult that is to actually... It's just like it sounds. Nope. K-U-J. <laughs> yeah, just A-L-A. like it sounds. L A. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kuyala. Not Kujala. <laughs> what is that anyway? Finish. Finish. Oh, of course. Um, so whenever we start, we always ask somebody what their favorite drink is or drink of choice. Mm-hmm. What's your drink of choice? Oh gosh, I didn't think about this. I mean, it doesn't have to be alcoholic, but we do judge you if you don't choose one of those. So. Okay. Well, I like a good. Cider, like good Michigan cider. What kind of what name a cider that you like? Uh, Vandermill. Any other ciders? They have some great blueberry ones, apple ones. We just watched Phoebe run down the stairs like she was like a superhero. So, um, all right. So we're gonna open with a few questions so people um, are familiar with who you are. Uh, what's your job title and who do you work for? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, Well, quite a change from what it would have been a year ago, huh? Absolutely, Mm -hmm. yeah. So I have jumped into ownership of my own business, and I'm lucky enough to have a partner in crime. So um, I'm an owner of a company called Special Occasions. We do specialty linen rentals, um, chairs, tables, all sorts of things for events, Mm -hmm. event rentals. And um, I've been in the event world Pretty much my entire yeah. professional career. You were at St. Mary's Foundation before. How right. long were you there? 14 and a half 14 years. And a half. Yeah. You couldn't just make it till 15. I know, like, I know. Yep, that just been shy. A but I will take that half yeah. year. Like, I yeah. don't, yeah. So I did all the fundraising events there, all the PR events, um, anything that fell under an event, I would take on, and I loved it. It was great. Well, and you grew from being what? Like, I mean, you're, intern? Yeah. Yep, and then you had how many people that you were managing yep. underneath you? Um, I had two people underneath yeah. me, two coordinators underneath me. But yeah, I was by the time I left there, I was at the director level. Yeah. So it was, I mean, I just it it was a great experience. Yeah. And my boss was amazing, mm-hmm. Michelle Rabadou. Um, Call is, out for Michelle. Seriously, <laughs> is still amazing. She is outstanding, and I'm so grateful that she like gambled on me. Yeah. Truly. I mean, I came in and she's like, we're not really looking for an intern. And I was like, I will, you can fire me. I will prove to you. <laughs> I will do anything. I know. So yeah. For and by the way, that's what any business looks for. Organization, nonprofit, whatever looks for in an intern is hustle. Um, all right. How do you know me? How do you know Kim? Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's been how long? Um, probably like 16 years Yeah, it's been of chaos. Yeah. Yeah. So before professionalism and husbands and life. Professionalism. <laughs> and all things Oh, that's right. I always forget that we had ex-boyfriends that used to hang out. So we saw each other all the time. Yeah. We were still in college. Yeah. Weren't we still in college at that time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. We used to hang out at Birch Lodge all the time. on Mich- Michigan Street was like our, our hangout place. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. We camped together. Yep. That's right. We did. We'd go to house parties together. Yep. All sorts of yeah. good stuff. I got lost in a closet one time. Yes, I do recall yeah, that. I you, wasn't going to bring that up. Yeah, though. but I mean, you pointed me to the bathroom, so, you know, <laughs> I didn't relieve myself in the closet. Oh, um, yeah, six, wow. There's some stories we could tell, but we won't. Yeah. That's not this type of podcast. <laughs> okay, so before we move into small business, and um, I'm so excited to get your perspective from coming from, obviously, you know, the nonprofit world or, you know, to suddenly owning your own business and what that's been like, and we've had really great conversations about that. But before we start, what are three things, this segment's called Three Things. What are three things that you cannot live without? Hmm. Sleep. <laughs> you don't get that anymore. You've got three kids in a business. You are so So right. you can live without that. And so every once in a while, I will just schedule myself some hibernation where I'm just like, I need a good 12 hours to catch up on the past month and just hibernate. Um, so yeah, sleep, would sleep. Be my one thing. number one, um, number two, I would say is, um, surrounding myself with powerful women, leaders, and my girlfriends. Yeah. 
they like fill my bucket. That's therapy for your soul. Yeah. And you know, at the end of the day, it is so hard to schedule those things. Yeah. In. It is hard because there are 10 million other things yep. I should be doing. And I have to make a conscious effort to say, yep, I will show up and I will be tired and I will, who knows? Yeah. But I will be there. Well, and if you don't do it, I think that you find like you're pretty useless in all the other areas of your life too. I mean, right. whether it's motherhood, whether it's being a business owner, whether it's being a wife, I mean, hey, we, I love my husband, but there's nothing like being able to sit down with a other business owners that completely know the struggles that you're going through and honestly your therapy and your sanity mm -hmm. at some points. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and other times like your girlfriends that, you know, are, are going to are gonna get your mind off that all the stuff that's like bugging you or bothering you and that you can have those really honest conversations with. Um, all right. What you have one last thing that you can't live without. This is so hard. I know. I guess like being a t continuous learner. Yeah. I, I'm a big nerd like that. Are you, so do you read a lot of like yes, business books and stuff yes, like that? Okay. Yes. What's, uh, what's one you just finished or are currently reading? One right now that I'm reading is E-Myth. Oh, okay. I, I think I read that a while back. What is that about? It's a little dry. Yeah. But we're getting well, through some it. Some of them are. Uh, yeah. Um, it's about being an entrepreneur yeah. and really like what's involved and oh, yeah. how you, oftentimes you do go into small business with the cute idea that it's going to be really fun and you're going to use your trades and talents. And um, really that comes in secondary. You are focused on running a business first. Yep. So it's, yeah, it's a good book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm reading um, Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. Okay, yeah. Um, which is super interesting. It talks a lot about like, you know, if you can, you know, lying and if people can detect if someone's telling the truth or not. Um, and it talks about like, I mean, it brings up certain instances like in our history with like the, the Cuba Missile. Cuba Missile Crisis and and things like that and you know I'm I'm about halfway through it and I found it I find it incredibly interesting but it, it it's a, also a bit depressing because apparently everyone lies or everyone's lying and we just can't tell so um, and machines are actually better at detecting it than we are which interestingly enough but and then another one I'm reading and this is we're we're talking on Veterans Day so um, shout out to all of our veterans. Uh, this one's called Son, uh, Sons and Soldiers, and it's actually about, and so this is, this is I'm a big history buff, and it's about um, the those that were born, or a lot of times the oldest sons that were born in Germany, um, and then when Hitler came to power, their parents found a way to get them out of the country and, or you know, get them over to America. And then they, so they grew up a portion of their life in Germany and a portion of their life in America. And then they ended up enlisting and then serving during World War II and became some of our most important assets because of their understanding of the language and the culture and the, you know, the, um, you know, essentially the region. So it's it's very interesting. I highly encourage you read it. Um, What's that called? Sons and Soldiers. Um, I can't remember who it's by, but I, I will, I'll, I'll get that to you. And then if anybody else needs to know you, reach out to me. All right, we're gonna talk about, again, my favorite subject, small businesses. <laughs> um, so you obviously know I've been a business owner for 13 years. Um, when I started in my 20s, I had legit zero idea what I was doing. Um, I thought I was invincible. Um, I'm glad I didn't know what I was doing because I think if I knew what I knew now, if I knew then what I know now, I do not think I probably would have started a business. People ask me that all the time. Um, you knew a lot of things before you started a business and you still did it. So I want to talk about that a little bit. What <laughs> did you expect? And I think it's important to, to note too, you, you are essentially the businesses that statewide. So right. you've got, you're in Grand Rapids, you're on the east side, and then you're also up north. That's correct. So Grand Rapids, Grand Blanc, and Traverse City. Mm -hmm. So we purchased all three of those. Um, yes, Kim, thank you for <laughs> emphasizing the fact that I did know mm -hmm. all of that and still made this choice. And you still did it anyway. I think that um, makes you crazier than me. It does, mm -hmm. kind of. Um, you know, I, there's something to be said for having this be your baby. Yeah. I really wanted to put a mark on what I was doing. And, and I did feel that way when I was working with St. Mary's at mm -hmm. Mercy Health. I did feel like I had the power to make a difference. But at some point, I wanted to be really 
painting the picture of what that looked like yeah. and putting my own brand on it and really using the resources that I know um, and what I've learned throughout the years into what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, it is an interesting um, jump because I was fully prepared for crazy. Yeah. But I will also say I was not fully yeah. prepared for crazy because it is, and I often think to myself, how cute of me to think <laughs> that this business ownership would be just so fun. And it is fun, yeah. but it is a whole different animal. Yeah. It truly is like another child. Yeah. Um, you are on call 24-7. Yep. And it's the whole idea where people are like, oh, you set your own schedule. You're the boss. Oh, my gosh, yeah. You're so, you have such a flexible schedule. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh, sure. If you call it working 24-7, flexible. Exactly, exactly. But the feel is different. Yeah. You know, if my former employer was like, we need you to be on call 24-7, answering all of these phone calls yeah. and taking all of these fires, yeah. taking care of it, I mean – you don't have that same ownership no. feel or passion for it or yeah. passion, mm -hmm. even though you could feel a hundred percent passionate mm -hmm. for it. It is not the same. No. So, um, yes, I think I just wanted a new aspect and really wanted to just jump in and be crazy. I don't know. And we've talked a little bit. Um, you know, there's things that you, you never, you can't plan for that happen. Like mm -hmm. you had a truck breakdown. Mm -hmm. um, you had a one of your presses or your mm -hmm. steam. What is it? Yeah, it's a press. It's a press um, breakdown. And so you know. And I think what's so interesting is that no, it's not a family business, but oftentimes it becomes a family business. Your dad was there fixing the press. Yeah. Um, you've had your husband Brian de helping deliver things. Yeah. You know, like when the kids are old enough, they'll certainly be doing something. Oh. You know, we're going to start training yeah, right away. Right away. You know, well, yeah, I've had my mom in there um, working on stains yeah. on our linens, yeah. you know? Scrubbing like, those out. Oh, what a out. luxurious oh. and job, I mean. It is real mm -hmm. fancy, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, it's anything from putting air in the tires to shoveling the front um, snow. Mm -hmm. I mean, and anything in between. It, it really is, especially, you know, starting off. Yeah. All hands on deck. And um, sometimes there's not a whole lot of hands to no. be on deck, so... Yeah. I think the family um, component of it is so important, too. Um, you know, I remember when Josh and I, obviously, I had my business prior to Josh coming into my life, and I remember they have a lot of misconceptions, too, about what it's like to own a business or run a business. Mm -hmm. And I think they anticipate that you can just shut things off, um, but that's not the case. I mean, even when you're sleeping, your mind is literally continually moving. And like, I dream about the business. I have nightmares about it. Like the, you know, like create, but your brain never fully sh shuts off from being a business owner. Yes, agreed. Yeah. 100%. So what do you think is one of the biggest hurdles you've, you've faced since you, you started this? since you took over running this enterprise? Well, I think the misconception is someone's like, you're good at something, mm -hmm. and so you should start a business. <laughs> I, yeah. I truly, you know, yeah. I, and I did have people say things like that to me. Oh, you're great at this. You should own a business. Yeah. And I wanted to stand back and say, well, just because you're good at a trade or yeah. you're good at something, yeah. it does not mean that you're qualified yeah. for running a business. Yeah. And I just... Um, I did a lot of preparation to make this shift and really tried to do as much research as I could because, again, it's not just me being an expert at events because being an expert at your trade or events yeah. does not run a business. No. Um, so preparing myself as much as I could um, and then learning that even that preparation does not truly no. prepare you for what? <laughs> I always say like people are like oh you're so pessimistic and I was like no I plan I anticipate the worst case scenario and I I plan for that because if you don't have a plan for that and you're not you know it's not that I want the worst thing to happen but I think you plan for it you plan for the worst hope for the best mm -hmm. and I always thought that was a stupid saying until I started running a business and I realized like I mean I remember getting my first tax bill and I was like holy cow why do I owe this much money or you know dealing with um, maintenance issues and for me I at least have somebody to call you are the maintenance guy like you've yep. got to fix it yourself and you have an older building right you know in in GR at least um and so like and then there's then there's planning for the future, and then there's working on your business versus in your business. And right now, you you've admitted too, like you're spending a lot of time working in the business. Oh yeah. 
you know, and it's, it's hard to take that step back at times and say, okay, uh, I, you know, I've, I've got a, I'm delivering linens, I'm doing this, mm -hmm. I'm managing people, making sure we're, we're staffed for setup and events and things like that. But now I need to think 10 years down the line or five years down the line. Right. I mean, we're just hoping to take it day by day right. or survive the next day. Right. And that's the hardest thing mm -hmm. because I want to make sure that all of my customers have an outstanding experience, mm -hmm. that everything is perfect to the T. And then where does that time allow you to step back yeah. and really look at the future. So yeah. really trying to prioritize and maximize every minute of my day. Okay. Of your yeah. yeah. And for somebody like myself who's not like the most organized, that can be that can be a little frustrating. Okay, so how can someone prepare to open a small business? Let's talk about advice you would give people. I think that Sitting down and talking with other business owners is probably your best bet. Yeah. I mean, even spending a couple days walking through and understanding how one business mm -hmm. can look very different from another business, um, because they all will have their own little quirks, and it's, a, it's an experience. There really isn't a great way to do your research, no. but I think it's your network of people. Well, and I think that's what you end up leaning on too when, you know, sh shit hits the fan. Yeah. And I think there's, n I don't think, I honestly truly don't believe there's anything out there that can prepare you for running a small business. I mean, I know they teach courses like on entrepreneurship and mm -hmm. in college and everything, but it's nothing like what the actual experience <laughs> is. Um, and I think, I think we always go, I know I went into it thinking it was something, going to be something completely different than it was, but... I also think this is a little bit, I think entrepreneurs like, or business owners are a bit crazy because think about it, look at everything that you've, you've been dealing with. And I mean, how long, what has it been? <coughs> six months, a year? Yeah. Six months. Six months. <laughs> Not even six months, just shy of six yeah. months. Yeah. And like, but you wouldn't trade it for anything. Right. You know, like you're just like, you right. do have to be slightly crazy because you you're always dealing with something. There's always something happening, you know? And, and I think women too, and I don't ever like to, to bring up the gender card, but I think it is important to say, like, you do have three kids, you do have a husband, so in some regard, you're you're working, I mean, you are, you, you're you trying to manage home, mm -hmm. life, and yeah. all this stuff, and um, what is that kind of, what's that adjustment been like? Well, my husband also travels. Oh, yeah, that's so right. that adds some interesting elements yeah. in there. Um, we have shifted more of my responsibilities a little bit more on him as well. Yeah. Um, but you know, it can be an interesting conversation. Yeah. Um, last week, my husband came home and said, I saw some of your friends from school, um, from the kids school in the grocery store. And they said that I am such a great husband for taking all three kids in the grocery store. <laughs> and I applauded him. Yeah. Fantastic Congratulations. job. But <laughs> let me tell you that I have never gone to the grocery store with all three of my kids and had someone stop nope. me and say, what a fantastic mom. You're yeah. doing a great job. Yeah. And so it's a um, very different standards. It is. It mm -hmm. is very different standards. And so acknowledging that and talking mm -hmm. about that with my husband and making sure that those concepts are not passed along to my children, yeah. um, that we are both working jobs. Yep. We both have careers, yep. um, and just because I'm the mom and he's the dad doesn't mean that we have different roles. Well, it's say. like when they say, like, oh, I'm going to babysit my kids tonight. Oh, yeah, no. no you're not no. going to babysit your kid. Right. You're going to parent your kid because right. you're a parent. Right. Um, I think that's so interesting, and um, those are – obviously, you know, Josh and I don't have kids, but those are conversations that we 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 have a lot of times, um, you know, and, and there is – I think a part of me has had to let go of how I expect something to be done and just be happy if it is done because <laughs> I have different, I don't want to say standards. I have different, probably too high of standards than um, I should. Uh, and I think that that puts pressure on him when he's trying to do what he thinks is the right thing, right. but it isn't maybe done how I would do it. Oh, and absolutely. I, and that so it really sounds like I'm a dick and sometimes I am, but <laughs> I think the what you say about um, men being applauded for essentially being parents or just doing what you would be doing every day is right. just 
a mother would, I think is, I think is interesting. And I do think is, is such an important thing that we talk about more and more, um, right. and that you bring up these things and that it becomes a conversation. What did, what was his response when you're like, I've no, I, I know I've never been congratulated yeah. for bringing my children to the oh, store. Oh, well, you know, he didn't have a whole lot to say to that, but you know, when I did follow it up, I am grateful because yeah. there are other spouses, yeah. regardless of yeah. what gender they are, yeah. that who, who can't handle doing things yeah. or who, you know, may not go outside their comfort zone yep. to do um, different tasks. And so I am very grateful, but I don't think that any of this um, really goes to being the, the mom or the dad or anything else. So we really have set some standards that we are both working professionals with children and um, family first always, yep. but recognizing things get a little crazy at yeah. times and we both need to pitch in. Well, and I think what's important to note too, it's never 50, 50. There are going to be times right. when it's 70, oh, 30 sure. or 60, 40 or hell, 90, 10. Right. And that's just the way it is. I think when people go into, you know, have that expectation that things are going to be always split down the middle, that's complete and utter BS. It's just not, that's never going to happen. Right. Um, what I would say is, you know, having a conversation with, you know, your your significant other or family before you maybe pursue business ownership is is some probably one of the first steps. But again, you don't know what you don't know right. until you're in it. Um, what is one piece of advice you would give someone looking? I mean, I know you talked about network and stuff like that. Like, what else? Um, I think a lot of it has to do with experience as well, especially if you um, are young and don't have a lot of experience. Yeah. Um, get involved with different organizations or clubs. I know, Kim, you are fantastic at doing that, but also volunteering for different yeah. organizations and jumping into that aspect of business that you're interested in yeah. and looking at it from a lot of different angles because sometimes the angle that you think you – would rain at is really not where you yep. need to be. Um, so really just trying to test the waters and people are gracious and um, willing to help. So um, I would say reaching too, out and asking for help. Well, exa and exactly. And that's so important is like you, like there's no room for pride in running a business. You, right. you have to be humble. You, you have to approach things with humility. Um, I always say that um, I hire people that are smarter than me, and I absolutely do. Um, I couldn't run my business if I didn't have a phenomenal team, and you've, you've often said that to me. Um, mm -hmm. You have a business partner that, you know, excels at things that She's maybe amazing. you don't. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I think that's so, you know, I think when you can recognize what your own weaknesses are, or what you maybe, you know, aren't, but for one, I, I've never been great at managing people, which is one of the reasons when we got to a point, I could hire somebody that, that would be their key focus. Um, and then, you know, making sure that we have people that, you know, know what's going on within the digital sphere. And like, there's, there's, our team is, is very diverse in, in terms of talent and skills. And I think you have to, as a, as a owner, um, put aside that, that pride or that ego um, because there's just no room for it in right. running a business. Agreed, 100%. Um, so one of the, um, another segment before we, we wrap up and you give your last wonderful piece of advice, I'll let you think on it. Um, what's one of the best stories you've heard this week? Oh my goodness. Yeah, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be anything related to business. I'm trying to think what's one. Probably everything I know is dog related. I'm hmm. trying to think. You're gonna have to edit this out. Me thinking. <laughs> we'll shorten the space a little bit. Um. Gosh, I feel like there were some ridiculousness things that happened with my kids. Oh yeah, please. Some kid stories. They're always like so stupid. <laughs> well, do they say? I mean, like... I don't mean. I mean, right. my stories are stupid. My kids are stupid sometimes too. But <laughs> it's a combo Sorry, my of dogs. all of us. Yeah. Um. Let me. Yeah. We should tell a story about how you have two boys, and um, you. when I talked to you, you were like, I'm not going to have any more kids. And then you were like, I must try for a girl. And thank God you ended up with Scotty. Thank the Lord yeah. I got a little girl. You could have had a third boy. That was a total gamble. Yeah, I Let know Let me tell you. Yeah. A very irresponsible mm -hmm. gamble. 
Because I was like, yeah, we'll keep him if it's a boy. <laughs> but that was not what we were going for. And that is you irresponsible super yeah, parenting. You super I can't yeah. help it. Yeah. So, yeah, we lucked out with yeah. the baby girl. And I just smother her with pink and glitter and all the things. All the things, yeah. girl. Mm-hmm. Until she turns tomboy on me, I'm sure. It's going it. to happen. It's totally, it's totally going to happen. Totally happening. Mm-hmm. And I'm fine with that. But for now, all pink. What's uh, What's one thing that people don't know about you? Or one thing that people would... I know one thing. But one thing that people wouldn't know about you. right? Like, I want to know what you say first. That you were uh, a rampage dancer. <gasps> oh. When we had our indoor football league here yes. in GR. How many years ago was that? A million. Yeah. I'm all washed up these days. Yeah. But I did dance for the Grand Rapids Rampage mm-hmm. for seven years. Mm-hmm. I was the captain on that. And you were, and then you traveled. taught dance. I was a dance instructor mm-hmm. and a dance coach mm-hmm. for a couple different varsity teams and a choreographer. And I've danced on stage for a couple fun little gigs. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever bring out the dance moves anymore? Oh, yeah. <laughs> At weddings, probably. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I always look around like, is this very 2005 of me? I'm not sure. Everyone there is just like, wow, I wish I could dance like that. Yeah, I no, I don't think so. Favorite but. song to dance to? Oh my gosh, anything. Really? Give me a break, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you. Anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm liking me some Lizzo lately. Oh, yeah. right. Yes. Right. Yes. Talk about that's what you need to blare when you're like having a bad day. Oh. I start my mornings with Lizzo. My dogs just, are like, what is happening? Oh, I was like, it's Lizzo. It's power. Yeah. Know yes. her. Love her. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about things we're obsessed with. Um, and I'm obsessed with the holidays, uh, which we've already decorated our office for the holidays. And I will be doing that as well with my house, which is actually a little late for me. Um, but I'm waiting for our carpets to get clean. Not that anyone cares, but now you know. How early is too early to decorate for the holidays? Before Thanksgiving, like right now. <laughs> like I walked in here and I was like, oh, we got a head start, didn't we? We sure did yep. last week. <laughs> yep. So when can you listen to holiday music? Does that have to wait till after Thanksgiving yes. too? Yeah. Yeah. So nothing right now. Like I was blaring it the other day. You wouldn't have been all about that. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Um, how long can you leave your Christmas tree and lights up before you look crazy? Like January mm-hmm. 2nd. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. 100%. All the decorations are gone. Yeah. Like, honestly, January 1st. I'm yeah, probably, if like, I'm not, you know, you've got a have a party too hard the night before. Yeah. And you just they're put gone. them away. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's your favorite memory about decorating for the holidays or just the holidays in general? That's a hard one. Yeah. Could be for the kids or. Well, you know what? We actually bring our kids to Florida to visit my in-laws, and I love it. It's so warm and toasty, yep. and I don't have to deal with snow. Mm-hmm. And then um, Santa delivers presents there, and he leaves a few at home, too. So Wow, the kids really are getting it. Yeah. Okay, what's it like the hot toy this year? I don't know. For the boys? I don't know. My boys love dragons Ooh. and dinosaurs. That's cool. And anything that's on a commercial that's green or blue doesn't even matter. It's That's so amazing. It's so obnoxious. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It does not even matter what it is, green or blue. I that, green honestly, or blue one. though, like, that makes them very easy to buy for. Or, like, greedy. Oh, yeah. Well, Pick they something out. Yeah, how do you, They don't like, even know what they want. No. They just want it. Do you, do you limit the amount of presents they get? Um, yeah. Oh, for yeah. sure. I even had to have some, like, conversations with grandparents. Like, yeah. they cannot truly appreciate what they're getting when they get so many things. Yep. So, Very like, true. One toy and some clothes or a yeah. toothbrush or something. We get, I don't know. Yeah, we do like just stocking stuffers now. Um, yeah. And actually, this year we're not, and well, and we, for the dogs, we do the stocking stuffers. Um, and actually, this year we're going on a cruise over New Year's. So Perfect. we're like, that's our, that's yeah. our present. Yeah. I'll still buy something because that's what I do. But yeah. Um, all right. So anything else you want to you wanna leave potential business owners or existing business owners with? Well, if anyone needs some linen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell people how they can get a hold of you. I can't believe oh, I almost missed that. call me. Look us up. Special Occasions MI. Um, we have a fairly new website up there that just shows some of the sampling of what we do. But we do tons of weddings, corporate. Your Instagram's really great. <gasps> Thank you for saying mm-hmm. that. It is, because you post. I, what you do is so visual, you know. It like, is, yeah. Well, and really, you know, 
our business isn't just for someone who's having a yeah. 50 table occasion yeah. like if you're looking for a linen for thanksgiving mm-hmm. or, or christmas yep. or whatever we've got some fun things that you can throw you have the coolest patterns <gasps> thank you i think so like too. Very, it's fun like I'm, I was obsessed when I did a tour. I am obsessed with doing different tablescapes yep. and like taking linens and matching In your colors. showroom, like, so which fun. is really cool. And you have yep. a showroom in, oh, I want to say Detroit, but East Side, yep. Grand, Grand Blanc. Grand Blanc. Yep. Grand Blanc. Yep. Whatever, Blanc. You're so fancy. I'm like, I'm French. I don't know what that was. Um, so Grand Rapids, we're right downtown on Granville Avenue, just about a mile south of Founders. What's the restaurant that's right by you that we went Mud to? Penny. Mud Penny. Super cute. Check Super, it out. Super, yeah. yeah. Really yeah. yummy. Yeah. So go there, get some food, go and then come and visit Carrie. And pop over. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, we have a great big showroom. And that's where we do all of our washing and drying and pressing and everything else, too. So All the fun cool. things. All the fun things. Well, thank you for joining us and talking about small business ownership. It is one of my favorite topics. I think I especially enjoy your um, your point of view, uh, being a newer business owner. Um, we'll have you back on in like two years and see how you're doing then. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You still won't be sleeping. Oh, so, excellent. well, that wraps up the episode. Um, check out specialoccasionsmi.com. Um, and, Carrie, you've officially been hustled. So, till next time, we will see you on the download.